Welcome to Flipping Miami, a podcast for those who want to learn real estate investing, do more, and make more. Now, here is your host, Raul Balufe. Yo, yo, welcome back to the channel. In this little video series, this is my the conference room in my building, my my uh, building where I live. <laughs> okay, and uh, sometimes I like to film from my apartment, but it was kind of I just didn't feel like it. I like it in here; it's quiet and weird. But okay, <laughs> let me get to it. So in this video, I want to talk about how to protect your wholesale deal. You know, you you finally got a deal in the contract. You went through the sales process. Watch the previous video for the sales process, by the way. Um, you finally got a deal under contract or you did it on the phone. However, however you did it on the MLS, you got this deal under contract. And now you're worried about buyers coming behind you, other wholesalers going around you and getting the property under contract. You're like, man, Raul, like, how do I protect this deal? I got it. I worked so hard for it. I spent, you know, thousands of dollars marketing. I went on tons of appointments and I did a ton of phone appointments, but I don't want anyone to steal this deal from me. I want to close it myself. What do I do, Raul? So I'm gonna go over that in this video. And if you like the idea of getting wholesale deals and you like the idea of being kind of free from, from the nine to five and free from maybe marketing so much and, and spending so much money to get a deal, um, I have this course that I made, it's called Wholesale Mastery and I talk about how to do MLS deals for free. I talk about how we're getting deals very cheap cold calling. Um, I talk about how to run a team all these types of things, you know, we've been wholesaling for six years now and done probably over 400 transactions and, and uh, made millions of dollars. But if that's in that interest, you can check that out on my website, robalufa.com. Also on my website, I have free stuff, free podcast. You can see my YouTube channel for free. Um, you could join our email blast and I send emails uh, about once a week for free. So anyways, let's get into it. How to protect your wholesale deal. Let me start this way. You can't, you can't really protect it a thousand percent. Okay. So number one, just live with that. Live with the fact that it's, it's not indestructible completely, but there are many things that you can do to prevent someone going behind your back. What do I mean by going behind your back? Just in case you don't know. So when you're wholesaling a property, you're getting it under contract. What you're doing is you're going to meet the homeowner, Hey, Susie, um, you know, I'm looking to purchase your house. Oh, awesome. Cool. Look, my offer would be a hundred. The house is worth 250. Let's say Susie says, okay, you know, the house needs a lot of work and I need to move fast. Okay. You signed the contract for a hundred thousand dollars. What happens is you haven't closed on this house yet. So this contract is just a piece of paper with both of our signatures on it. The, the homeowner and mine or the homeowner and your signature, let's say. So since it hasn't closed, since money hasn't been transferred, technically she could sign another agreement with, let's say me, another investor. And now there's a mess and you're wondering like, what, how, who, but like, what do I do? So there's a couple ways to protect it. The first way is you could do what's called a, a memorandum of sale. You can record it. It's basically a piece of paper or an affidavit or an addendum, I mean, you can call it many things. It's a piece of paper that it has some fancy language that's made by an attorney that I would ask your attorney or an attorney in your area to do it for you. And it basically says, I, Raul have this property under contract and I want to record my rights to it. So you get this, you get your contract, you get this piece of paper, this memorandum of sale, um, and then you take it to the county clerk so let's say you're in uh, you know Broward County. You take you Google Broward County Clerk Office. You drive. You get in your car or you take an Uber and you go there and you take them these two papers, the contract and the memorandum. You you go to the desk and say, Hey, I want to record this, and then they will say, Okay, great. Now that is in theory the the best way to do it because. Now you technically have a notice of interest on the property. You have an interest on the property and it's recorded. So to not get too nerdy on this, right? Let's say me and Susie, we put this house on their contract. What we do is we get this contract. We take it to a title company. 
The title company will then run title, which is on a computer, and it's mixed with the county clerk. So let's say this property is in Broward County. We take the contract, the title company inputs all the information in their little computer, then they start running title. To run title, they gotta get information from the Broward County clerk. So if there's a memorandum of sale recorded in this county, Broward County clerk, it's gonna pop up into the title company's computer and say, hey, you can't sell this property, Miss Susie. Raul Balufa has a memorandum of sale. Oh, but I, I didn't like his contract. It doesn't matter. He recorded it and you signed it. So that is a memorandum of sale. But here's my challenge with it, especially for me and here in, in South Florida, Miami-Dade and Broward County, um, we have tried many memorandums of sales in different attorney language and we just haven't gotten it to work. Like the county will not record it. They just will say no. And we're like, what do you mean? What do we have to change? They tell... It's been very difficult to do that. So let's say you're not in that position that you can't do that. The, the best way that we've been able to do it is on our contract, we have language that says, hey, if another buyer approaches you, um, this is a reminder that we have interest in the contract and you cannot sign another contract. If you do sign another contract, we have the right to put a notice of interest or list pendants on the property immediately. So basically we put on our contract that they cannot sign something else. That doesn't really do much. However, we, the sellers are supposed to read the contract when we give it to them. So they at least know. So, okay, we get them to sign that, con that on our contract. The next step is when we promote these deals to our buyers, um, we don't, and we send it on our email blast, we don't put the full address anymore. So if the property is 345 um, Avenue Road, is the address, we'll put star, 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 Avenue Road. And then a picture of the house and we'll try to get a picture with the, that doesn't have the number of the house. So that's what we'll do to protect. So that means that it's gonna be really tough for these buyers to find the address of that property to even go behind our backs. And what that does is that it has to force the buyers to text us or call us and then we'll vet the buyers right there. Hey man, yeah, so you saw that property, awesome. Yeah, are you interested in it? Yeah, I want to go see it. What's the full address? Yeah, cool. I'll give you the full address in a second. Let me uh, just get some details on, on you so um, so then we can be clear. So, hey, you know, what's the company you buy properties under? Oh, okay. Are you working on any projects right now? Awesome, man. Cool. Do you buy it for fix and flip, buy and hold? Oh, cool. Do you buy hard money, private money, cash? Awesome, man. Yeah, um, I would love to, to send you this house. Yeah, now that I got your information. And what's your full name again? Oh, okay, cool. Perfect. Yeah, so the full address is this. So now I know who it is. I know his full name, I know his company name, I know other projects he's working on. So if anything happens, I know where to talk to. I know you're probably thinking, Raul, it doesn't solve the problem. Like, what if he still goes to steal my deal? You're gonna have to live with that. It's just gonna happen in your career eventually. Now, the last piece of the puzzle is, let's say we do everything correctly and someone still goes behind our back and signs a contract. We have it under contract for 100. Another buyer comes in and says, Susie, I'll give you 120. She's like, hell yeah. I don't like Raul anyways. I don't know if she has a country accent. I don't like Raul anyways. I'm gonna sign that contract. So she signs a freaking contract with another buyer. How do we find out? Because when there's a, it's a week till closing, we call Susie, she doesn't answer. Title company calls Susie, she doesn't answer. Okay, something's off here. We finally get a hold of Susie and she says, oh no, I signed a contract with another buyer for 120,000. We're like, Susie, you can't do that. Well, I don't care, bye. So now what we do is that we hire an attorney, a real estate attorney, to put a notice of interest on the property and a lawsuit, which is basically called the list pendants. It depends on where you live in the US or anywhere in the world. But basically I would hire an attorney. For us, it costs us about $1,000 to get this done. I know you're gonna have to invest some money. However, then it pretty much guarantees that they cannot sell the property without dealing with you first. So I've been through about maybe like 10 of these at this point, eight to 10 of these at this point. And every time we've settled in a mediation or we've settled at a price or we've settled on terms is something that makes sense. So they'll, something that happens is, okay, they'll get the letter, the lawsuit in the mail and they'll, they'll call me. Oh, what happened? It's like, hey, I told you that we had contracts for this house. Oh, well, I want my attorney. Okay, cool, hire your attorney, here's my attorney info. They battle for a month or two and then they say, we say, hey, why don't we just settle this? And then we meet in a room and we settle it. That's pretty much what happens almost every time. 
So I didn't mean to ramble so much, but to protect your deal, you can do a memorandum of sale. Ask an attorney to draw, up, draw one up for you and try to record it on your first contract. Number two, don't send the full address to your buyers or on an email blast. Make them call you, text you, get their information and do it. Then number three, if they still go around you, then hire an attorney to do a list pendants, notice of interest, lawsuit on the house so you can have full right to it. Bam. All right, guys, so if you guys like this video, I want you to also, if, if you guys have a situation like this and you need some help, put a comment on YouTube or on the podcast or something. Or you can reach out to me directly, Raul at RaulBalufa.com, and I will answer you. I will answer you. I really will. I get those emails. And, uh, yeah, if, if you need some help on that, let me know. I would love to help you and see if this helped to shed some light. If you guys have a complicated situation that you're able to solve, please share it. Share it with the group. Share it with the, with the YouTube Share with everybody so we can uh, all learn from each other. Anyways, uh, feel free to check us out, robalufa.com. Check out our podcast, Flipping Miami Podcast, um, and the YouTube channel, Robalufa. You can also follow me on Instagram, Robalufa, and I answer all my DMs. Love you guys. Love you. I want you to succeed. I want you to not get your deal stolen, but if you do, follow these steps. All right, peace.